Welcome in. Out of Touch, episode number eight. John Alden here with me, as always. Dustin Schutte and Mitchell Page. It is... Well, it doesn't matter what date is because you're going to be listening to this on Wednesday or whatever day comes after Wednesday that you decide to pull this fun little podcast out of your podcast queue and, and listen to our silly behinds talk about whatever it is we're going to dive into tonight. I'll tell you what, um, my mind is in the music world. I'm I'm excited. I told you a lot, y'all last week that Bourbon and Beyond and Louder Than Life are in town. I didn't go to Bourbon and Beyond, but Louder Than Life is my thing. And I'm not I'm not the stereotypical like metalhead that's going to dress up in all black, you know, put on the makeup and that kind of stuff. Honestly, when I show up at those things, I don't look like I belong there at all. You know, I I just look like I should be as as a friend of mine once put it, I look like I should be working a merch booth at a Three Doors Down show or something like that. I'm not <laughs> I'm not some weird well, gothic metalhead kid. And, and let me put it this way. It's not weird. If, if that's your thing, then go for it. Be that person. But I, if you saw me compared to what everyone else, or at least the majority of the people that go to this kind of festival look like, I look like I don't belong at these things. What even is that supposed to mean that you would be selling merch at a Three Doors Down concert? It just I just look like, I don't know that the person that you would picture selling the merch at a three doors down show. I don't know. All right. You're not a big concert goer, right? Dustin. I'm not because I don't, I mean, I enjoy them, but they're so hit or miss. I've been to such bad concerts and the worst one I've ever been to was Jason Mraz. And I feel like, are you laughing at me, John? Is no, I, I have something back? I want to ask you uh, about okay. some of your concert experiences because I'm aware of one of them and I want you to tell a story about it. But continue your Jason Mraz okay. one. So Jason Mraz, I bought. So most of the concerts I have gone to in my life have been um, like for somebody else. I purchased tickets to go see them for someone else, and Jason Mraz is one of those. And I don't know if he was like hungover or still <laughs> stoned or what the case was, but I mean. Every song he'd be like, all right, you guys know the words. And I'm like, I did not pay $100 to listen to myself and these random thousand strangers sing this song. I came here to hear you sing it. And so that's kind of in a, in a nutshell what my concert experiences have been. I've been to some good ones, but there's been some duds along the way. Mitchell, what about you? Any, any particular concert experiences that... That you've had are you a concert guy at all do you do you hate live music do you just say screw it Keep, give me the I, studio versions and that's it if it's like a, I don't typically go to a big concert where there's thousands of people around but if somebody's playing live music at a bar and it's just a small venue i love it um there's a, a place in charleston called henry's that has three levels and they're different bands are playing all three levels. That's really cool. And that's the kind of environment I like. Um, but to pay $60 to go stand next to somebody that's sweaty in the grass, <laughs> right, I'm good. Uh, I've had my fun. I went to some concerts like right at the beginning of college that were fun. All my buddies were going, but I, I wouldn't say, that's something that I'm looking for. I don't definitely don't get any notifications of who's in town. Yeah. I'd love to see you both just pop into a mosh pit or, or crowd surf and just, you know, tell me what your experience would be like, because that's, that's the type of environment you get when you go to, you know, a rock and metal type festival. So I'm really hoping that next week I have a lot of stories about the things that I'll see, especially when I go on Friday on Friday, I'm going all day. The other days I might just, you know, pop in and out and, you know, just hang out for a couple of hours, but I'm excited. Uh, one thing I'm not excited about though, about any time that you go to, to events like this is the restrooms, the porta pots, the Johns, whatever you want to call them, especially because, you know, you never know what people have, you know, had to drink, had to eat and what you're walking into when you step into these things. And that's only half the problem. The, the problem I really want to address here is the P anxiety or the stage fright. Y'all ever heard those terms before? Yes. Uh, shy bladder. Shy, 
that's that's what I've never heard before. Shy shy bladder. I like that. But the one thing that I absolutely hate when I walk into one of those stalls is feeling like the person that's waiting to come in after you is just like trying to hurry you up. You know what I mean? And by thinking about that, you yourself can't urinate. You can't relieve yourself. And it's one of the more stressful things. And I do this kind of thing, not even just at like concerts and festivals, but at work, at work, in any, any place with a public restroom with, with where it could be crowded at some point, I get stage fright. I get the pee shyness, whatever the heck you want to call it. And I hate it. And I'm not looking forward to dealing with it on uh, when I'm at the festival. I am laughing at you, John, because I have the exact same problem. It's <laughs> <laughs> me 100% of the time. And I'll give you a quick story. Okay, so last year when I was living in Gainesville, my brother works for the UF Athletic Department. He gets pretty good seats to Florida football games. I mean, he pays for them, but... So anyway, we go into the swamp for, I think it was a day game against Missouri. And, you know, we had been tailgating. And so that means we were drinking some beers. So game time comes around. And obviously, you know, before the game starts, you want to go to the stadium, go to the bathroom so you don't have to go again. And there are, you go into the bathroom, there are obviously urinals, but there's no dividers. Oh, okay. And yeah. there was obviously a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure <laughs> on your boy here. You can't, I mean, can't can't go. So we left the I, you know, we left the bathroom. My brother goes to the seats. I keep on walking. He's like, where the hell are you going? I'm like, I'm going to this bathroom over here. <laughs> I'm gonna get into an actual stall so I can actually go. Because I can't, if people are I hate. This is why I also am not very good at golf to relate this to Mitchell. I can't, I don't like when people watch me do things. I hate it. I cannot perform in any capacity when people are watching me do anything. As Mitchell cracks up on the YouTube. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't. This is nothing. That's something that's never even crossed my mind. No P anxiety for you. Ever. Ever. In any situation, no, no problem. Can, can we just take a time out here quick, though, John, to recognize that Mitchell also played college football in front of 100,000 yeah. people. So yeah. I don't expect him to have 15 people in the bathroom be much of a problem for him. Yeah. But it's not the, like nobody cares. I think that that's the thing. Like, nobody cares. Nobody I think cares. It's for me, it, it's, it started in high school because, and maybe it's just my generation that was doing this. Maybe I'm wrong. You can correct me if I am. But people would do one of two things. They would either purposefully go to the opposite side of the bathroom to use the opposite urinal, or they would purposefully come to the urinal directly next to you to make you uncomfortable. And I think that's where that kind of stuff starts. Well, there's definitely rules. If we're talking about the, the stalls or the like whatever you're doing, urinals in particular, if you go in, let's say there's five in a row. When you're walking in, you always, this is what I do. And this is something that I think is an unwritten rule that I've experienced other people doing without us talking about it. We all have to kind of do it the same. Am I blacking out on your guys' screen? You're here. No, we got you. Okay, cool. I just saw the little rotation. The YouTube always throws me off. Um, but if there's picture five, you go the first person always goes to the farthest first one. Yep. The second person goes to the nearest one. So there's three in between them. You stay as far away as possible. Now the third person comes in. You have to go to the middle. one. Right. You have to. So there's definitely rules. And then fourth and fifth, you got no choice. You got to just go where you can go. But there's, there's rules to it. But I have never heard. Actually, now that I think about it. My wife is kind of like that. She's like she's really? like you guys. I I may be in the minority here. I I am yeah. I just but I'm also I don't care. Like you can pretty much do anything to me, and I'm not gonna get embarrassed about anything. Like I just don't care. Um, here's a fun story. I reference my mom every week. Here's the mom reference. Um, when I was a senior in high school, 
we were having our senior day for golf. So small team, just parents. It's not like some big event. We were just at the golf clubhouse. And the parents were supposed to say some special talent that their son had. And there's people are saying all kinds of stuff. He's good at math or whatever. My mom, for some context, my mom is a phenomenal singer. She sang at our church. She was the lead singer. She was just like phenomenal. Played piano, very musically inclined. Me, not at all. So she says she wasn't trying to make me feel bad or embarrass me, but I know she was. Her special fact was that I could sing. Oh, boy. I can't find <laughs> fine singing. I sing. We talk about festivals. I know more words to songs than I probably know of anything else. Like if a song comes on, I know the words and I sing it, but I'm not a good singer. So she says I can sing. Obviously, next thing is, oh, well, now we have to hear this guy sing. And the suggestion for a song is the school fight song. What? <laughs> yeah, which I was doomed from the start. Even if I was I, like the greatest singer on the planet, you're still going to sound bad singing the yeah, fight song. Yeah, that's setting you up for failure right there. Absolute right. failure. But yeah, so that is a, what reminded me. So I was up there by myself in front of players, coaches, and parents. And I sang the whole fight song with no music behind me, just me singing. And Oof. even that, I was like, whatever, I'll be fine. So Wow, that, that takes some balls. I'll tell you that. that that's that's gutsy. Um, cause that'd be, do you guys need something done that you're scared to do? Call me. I'll do it. I don't care. That's what I mean. You brought up the skydiving last week, I think. And that was, I mean, that's a tough thing. Yeah. I, I, I'm not going to love it. But, well... That's going to be a, because I'm jumping yeah. out of a perfectly good plane at 10,000 feet versus going to the bathroom. Like <laughs> those two different <laughs> levels of things. But yeah, I, I, there's just not a lot that do you guys get embarrassed about stuff? Like if you got called out, let's say you're at a public gathering and someone's talking on the microphone, they call you up to say some words about whatever it is. Are you like panicked? Yeah, because I'm not a pub. I'm not the even though I do this kind of thing for a living, speaking into a microphone for people yeah. to listen. I would do not like public speaking in like live yeah. situations. With the beauty the about doing community. something like this, yeah, is that yes, people are listening and or watching, but they can't see. I mean, yeah, they can see, but you can't see them. And yeah, it's just it's us not that talking you, right now. Yeah, and, and and this isn't live either. Certain shows that we do that are live as well, but that's it's still not the same level of intimidating. Just because there's just something different, and, and it's different for for different people, obviously. But it's hard for I, me to look people in the eye and be myself in that kind of scenario. And a one-on-one -on -one conversation, it's one thing, but yeah. whenever you're expected to be, I don't know, a motivational speaker. Or, you know, say a few words about somebody who may mean a lot to you. That's that's different. I think what's interesting, and people ask me this because I've told people before, like, I am I don't have a lot of confidence. I am very, I get, I don't even know if it's embarrassed is the right word, but I just kind of, like, panic. Like, I freeze up, I tense up. and start, Like, if it takes me too long to get collect my change in the receipt at the grocery store and I'm holding up the line, that makes me very nervous. Yeah. So it's just things like that. But, and people will ask like, why did you go into media? Why do you ask questions at big, like, how are you able to do that? And I think it's because it's the difference between spontaneous and like a controlled setting. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Like, it's just, to, I don't even know if I can describe it properly, but I feel like television cameras, radio microphones would be intimidating to a lot of people. To me, it's not. And it's because I'm kind of like, I can do my own thing. I'm not being rushed. There's nobody, like you said, John, there's nobody really watching me. I'm just kind of doing my own thing. But if I'm in the store and I'm holding up 10 people in line and I feel like they're getting angry with me, yeah. <laughs> then the jitters start to set in. And I like, I just rush speaking to get everything the, done. Speaking of the store and, and this, what you said just reminded me of this. Uh, I made a comment. I just, I don't really tweet a lot of my own opinions on Twitter very much unless I'm talking about football or if I'm, just have a weird experience. Well, I was, I was a little pissed off at Walmart, not at Walmart. Like the, I wasn't mad at the store itself. 
I was mad while I was at Walmart. It's because I went on a Sunday <laughs> afternoon. And if you know anything about Sunday afternoons at a store, any store, it doesn't have to be Walmart, you know the kind of people that are there and the, the age demographics that could be there and what those people like to do while they're in the aisles. And, you know, it's some people think it's social hour. And I decided to take that to Twitter. And Dustin apparently had a similar experience going to a store as well on, on Sunday. And, and that's nothing new, but I don't know. I, I, I was very aggravated with, and maybe it's just the fact that I, I go on Sunday afternoons regularly and I just got fed up with it and wanted to sit, wanted to share my thoughts. But if you, if, if you understand what I'm saying, you, you, you get it right. It's, it's a nightmare. Sunday at any store is a nightmare because it's just so like we were 12 deep. In, I was at Kroger doing grocery shopping. We were 12 deep in the self checkout aisle. Like that, it's just nuts. I'm like, why does everybody have to go to the store in the afternoon? I mean, I know it's after church. I know everybody's got the day off. What it was probably actually, it might've been late morning. Cause I think it was before the Colts game. So that explains a little bit of that too. But uh, yeah, I, this is why I wish I had weekends off, but sometimes it's nice to have Wednesday and Friday off because then I can go to the store on a Wednesday and nobody's there and I can just do my thing, take my time and I don't have to wait on anybody. Mitchell, do you do the grocery shopping in your family, in your household? Uh, we switch off whoever's out. I'm very quick in there. Like if, I've got five things. I know where most of the stuff is most of the time. Sometimes I don't, but I walk directly to them. I have a set plan, walk to it. If someone's in the aisle where one of my things is, I will go to the next thing. I don't have time for waiting on anybody. I was going to ask, I was curious. I think you just answered Dustin, but do you guys go self-checkout or standard checkout? Self-checkout every time. Why do you think that is? I think people at least and maybe it's gotten more popular since COVID and maybe I'm wrong, but I think people just don't <laughs> want to interact with other people when they're at the store. They just want to they want to go in, grab their stuff, check out and leave. It's it's typically the fastest way to get in and get out. I think that's so interesting because I think it's mostly that, too. COVID sparked it, but I find myself. I go in the store, get my stuff, and I'm out of there, and I speak to no one. And that's kind of sad. That's kind of <laughs> sad. Is it, though? Yes. Yes. I I wear my headphones in the store. That, oh, wow. So you're, you shut yourself crazy. out even more than I do. That's <laughs> crazy. You Humans are supposed to interact. Do you ever have I like agree. a conversation with someone that you don't know and it's two seconds long and you both kind of smile and then you walk away? You just you feel better after you do that. I, I think you're right. It, you're right. But no, that's a good point. You're that's fair. I've I've tried to make it a point of at least smiling at like three people when I'm in there. And it's still very the first person. I, mean, I like that. And then, I like that about you. It's your. It shows your friendly nature. And I'm. I'm sure you're. You're. Ex, you're an extrovert, aren't you, Mitchell? This has yeah. become more evident. I'm sure. I'm. Yeah. I, I'm supposedly an extrovert, but I'm. I've tended to blame COVID on this, but and maybe it's a, a number of things. But in the past three years, I've become way more introverted than I have before COVID was a thing. And bef and really, a lot of things happened. At once, I feel like I may have mentioned this before. Maybe I haven't. I don't know. But all at the same time, or at least within a couple of months span, I graduated college. COVID happened. or excuse, Not in that order. Excuse me. Graduated college. Got my first professional job, adult job. COVID happened. I got furloughed and I got married. All those things happened within a two or three month time span. And I don't know if, how much of that had an effect on the way that my personality might have changed a little bit, but I don't know. I tend to think that's the case. Who knows? I definitely have gotten grumpier. Since you've been married? <laughs> no, this just since I've gotten older. <laughs> gotten older. Like, I don't, I have to consciously, like, make myself be outgoing again. Like, I, if my perfect week involves me never leaving this house except to go golf 
and that's it. And that never used to be the case. Like I haven't right. gone to a bar in, I don't even know how long, like, I, I just have no, I don't go out. I don't do anything. I don't really text anybody. And I think that that's maybe, I think that's kind of a guy thing. I, I think that a lot of people that I know that are guys do that. We're just kind of hanging out. I play video games with them, but I don't, I used to be really excited for a Friday and Saturday night. Let's go hang out and go to my buddy's house. And now I'm just tired. <laughs> that's that that is life i don't well like my schedule is a little bit different so the friday yeah. saturday thing isn't always the big thing for me but like here's the interesting thing because i am a lot of times like you mitchell where i'm like yeah i could do this thing but it's just so much easier to stay in but every time i go do that thing i'm like why did i even think about not doing it so like a couple weeks ago i went hiking at turkey run and I debated with myself like all morning, eh, I don't really want to go. Eh. And then I was like, okay, you need to get out and do something because you've been in this apartment for a full week. And I went out and I had the best, I was just me, but I had the best time I've had outdoors in a long time. It's like, why did I even think about not going? I meet friends for trivia every Wednesday. And there's always like that little bit of like, eh, I can just stay home. But then I go down there and I have a blast with them. So it's just like, I don't know. It's, it's just so much easier to be like, I just want to stay at home and do nothing. But I, I try to force myself to go out and do things and have some sort of, some sort of interaction. I think how we got used is, to, Oh, go ahead, Mitchell. You how know. much of it is related to money? I'm like the cheapest cheapskate there ever was. Like I, I would much rather just stay in and not spend my money on food. That's not even that good. To me, it's not really that much of a factor. Yeah, I don't. I think everybody's got the reasons. I was just curious. I think we just learned to appreciate all of the time we got on our own during those months, especially right when COVID was like you can't go do anything that kind of. And, and I guess some of that depended on where you lived. I know we're all from from different areas of the country, and so. I don't See, know. and for me, it was a little bit different because Georgia was shut down to like two weeks. So I was pretty mm -hmm. much able to go over and maybe were you in South Carolina at the time? Mitchell? No, I was in Indiana, oh. but Carmel was kind of where I was living the same way. Yeah, Carmel and Broderpool, cool. like we were, COVID was great for me. I was living with my buddy. He was in Broderpool. He had a house. We had everybody over all the time. I feel like we're far enough out that I could say this now, but <laughs> Yeah, like we were, that was awesome. I was working in orthopedics, so surgeries were shut down for five or six months. Like I was just slamming monsters and playing Call of Duty for 12 hours. It was it's like you were a kid again. It was awesome. It was awesome. I bought a motorcycle. I don't even know why I did that. <laughs> I'm just did you seriously? Like, oh, yeah. A little How many times movie. have you ridden it? I sold it already, but I rode it all the time. I moved to South Carolina, and it was the only reason I sold it, not because I wasn't riding it. It was just scary. The drivers are so bad that <laughs> it was not worth I see that. The, the roads were just kind of uneven, and drivers are bad. You just couldn't really take it anywhere. So got rid Could of it. Could you imagine? I'm just picturing you with your uh, blonde hair. <laughs> I've been sitting on a motorcycle with a, a black leather jacket. Oh man! I was thinking the same thing. Well, I'm just <laughs> picturing you, but your helmet is your Indiana football helmet and not an actual. Oh, that would have been even helmet. better. It was. It was a little crotch rocket. It was awesome. <laughs> well, there you go. Um, I guess a couple more things I want to get into. Have you all seen the? AI, and this is going to be more of a sports niche for those who, who don't always get into the sports stuff, but have you all seen the AI press conferences that came out from Brian Ferentz and Matt Campbell today? No. Yes. That got some people. Is this on Twitter? This is on yes. Twitter, and I'm going, to play, I'm going to play the audio from them so you'll be able to hear what they say. But if you've looked these up on Twitter, and I don't know what you have to type in exactly, but if you look these up, I mean, these look – legit the 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 way to find out though if these are 
if these are fake, like if you're looking for it is the way they like what they put in the background on the, um, you know, like the press boards. But this is what Brian Ferentz, you know, obviously didn't say, but this is what they used as the bait. You all have had fun with this 25 point obsession and I get it. I do. But if I'm not mistaken, we just dropped 41 on Saturday. So maybe it's time to grab a hold of your little step ladders and go ahead and climb out of my ass for a while. <laughs> and it's, and again, you may not find that funny if you're not following college football closely, but it's well, hilarious. To, for context, Brian Ferentz has in his contract that Iowa has to average 25 points per game this season because their offense has been so bad. 25 points is really not that much. No, it's not. It really My they worst didn't. years at IU, like worst years on offense, I think we averaged 29 and a half or 30. Like, and we were good on offense, but we had years where we averaged 36, 37. Like, 25 is just not that many times. No, I just can't imagine yeah. seeing that or even hearing it and not realizing it's AI. And you're just like, wow, Brian Ferentz but how, coming out of the cage for that one. How great would it have been if he actually said that, though? Oh, it would be. <laughs> I don't, you'd have to. I wonder if you'd get a response from Kirk Ferentz at that point. I don't oh, know if yeah. you would need one, but. Is that <laughs> his son? It, it is, yeah. right? Yeah, it's his son. Yeah. And then the other one, it's funny how both of these come from from Iowa schools. I'd love to see if there are more out there. But this one is Iowa State head coach Matt Campbell responding to a, a confrontation he had with a fan after their uh, their loss to Ohio. Uh, first of all, I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, I'd, I'd like to take this chance to apologize uh, to absolutely nobody. The, the Fiesta Bowl champ does what the f*** he wants. <laughs> if that troll after the Ohio game wants to meet in the next rough and rowdy, I'll send his Mardi Gras bead wearing trash ass back to Sunnyvale in a coffee can. Uh, <laughs> Again, <laughs> I love the have uh, watch. Only thing I took out of that. Have y'all watched the Barstool rough and rowdy? Before? I have not. No. Oh, you would love it. You would love it. It's uh, like just West Virginia people fighting no headgear boxing and <laughs> some of the fights aren't as good because they get tired and they they usually come out throwing haymakers and if they don't knock the other person out in the first round they're just tired but you get some absolute characters in that so i think it's funny that they reference rough and rowdy but matt campbell man he's brock purdy must have been really good I think so. What would a, what would, and again, we'll, we'll, we won't make this an Indiana football thing, but what would a Tom Allen AI press conference sound like? I don't even know what you would get. There's three thing. letters. What are we talking? What? AI no. can't even infiltrate LEO. <laughs> LEO also, life. I'm just going to say this. Tom Allen's press conferences are a little AI-ish as is. If so he weird. talks so fast that I can't even keep – like. I feel like if you put him in, there should be like an auctioneer contest between he and Brett Bielema because those two guys talk so fast at all times. <laughs> he's the I miss anti. I'm, I'm happy with where the team is, but his press conference, he's the anti Dion. Like Dion is a quote machine. Tom Allen says a bunch of stuff really fast without really even saying anything, which I think that's 95% of college football coaches. Truth. I feel like Kevin Wilson used to just like list off the depth chart and go through stats on, in his press conferences. His mind was right. It was working way too fast for what he question he was being asked. I can tell you there's no way he listened to any question he was ever asked. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. He was already, he had something in his mind from practice that he listened to the first part, already formulated an answer, and then just started. Um, I do want to hear what you guys think. We're talking college football coaches and Dion, obviously Colorado, the most exciting program in the country. But did you all see the 60 Minutes interview he did? I didn't. So it came out just, I think, yesterday, maybe Sunday, whenever 60 Minutes comes out, so probably Sunday. But – the guy asked him, who do you think is the best football coach in the country? And where other coaches would say, whatever, you know, there's a lot of great coaches out there, blah, 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 whatever. 
Dion responded, well, do you guys have a mirror? Because if you have a mirror, I can look at them. <laughs> like, oh I, think, I think that is so cool. Are you guys fans I, of Colorado and the Dion experience? I'm or? not fans of Colorado, but I, I'm up for all of the Dion antics. As long as he doesn't do anything illegal or, you know, hurt somebody in the process of, of his ridiculousness, I'm here for him to take it as far to the edge as he wants to. Here's the thing. I, I liked it when it was at Jackson State. And here's the reason is because – I get tired of the constant and they are constantly in the media. Like it is just, it's his quote after his quote, after his quote, after his quote. And obviously it's doing numbers. So obviously they have to cover it, right? Like it's getting attention. So I don't really blame them for covering it, but I get worn out on that stuff. When it was at Jackson state, you would just like, Oh, here's a sound bite from this game. Here's a sound bite from this game. Here's a highlight from this game. And so it wasn't as constant. So I liked it then. Now I'm like, okay, this is a little too much. I agree it's, with you there. It's seeped into a little too much. The coverage is annoying. That part I don't like because it's legit. Like I, I, exactly what you just said. I know they're doing because they they want the numbers. But when you just when you remove that aspect of it, what Dion is doing, I just think it's it's funny and it's, it's oh, it's it, sick. It's the reason they're covering it. I mean, I know they they're one and the same, but Lil Wayne know. led them on the field. Lil Wayne. Hey, well, last year, just uh, there, there's been other instances of of artists doing that. Walk a flock of flame ran out on the Not field. Lil Kentucky. Wayne. Lil Wayne's Waka like Flocka the is best a- rapper. Lil Wayne is the most famous influential rapper of our generation, and it's not even close. I would argue That's true. that. I think there was a point yes. where he was the most influential. Look up every top 10 song that got released from 2005 to 2012. Lil Wayne is featured on that song. That's I don't see, care. Now that, that era checks out. It was the Lil Wayne era. Like you, had, it you was gotta just, subtract a few rap. five years for me. I guess it depends. We we each, each of us probably have different musical artists who were you know at the top of their game at different times. Like for me, me being a few years younger than you. Drake and and I'm not a fan of Drake, yeah. but Drake is easily the most influential. Yeah, maybe not I just artist. He but comes rapper, right after, whatever. like when you talk about generations. Obviously, Lil Wayne found Drake. Drake was a part of Young Money. They all come up, and then Drake is good enough that they all separate and kind of explode everything. And we don't have to talk about the background of all that. But that was like I was listening to that stuff. I, I wasn't really listening to anything else. So. Lil Wayne was in my headphones every time a song played for seven years. And I bet every kid on the team is just the same way. Everybody in that, like, it is crazy. The rock is there. The the interview with Offset was a little chaotic, but like all of these guys, I'm a Miami Hurricanes fan first. That's what I grew up liking Miami and what they're doing Feels like the 2020 version I've heard of this the comparison. 1980s Miami team. Yep, I agree with I you. Can they talk that. trash. They're not apologetic about it. And I don't think they're quite good enough yet. I don't think there's enough skill. Like the 1980s Miami teams were beating people by a thousand. I don't think Colorado is quite doing that. But when you generate that excitement, you're going to start seeing in the next two, three re- recruiting cycles, these five star players. Travis Hunter's just the beginning. These kids are going to be picking Colorado over Georgia, Florida State, Miami, LSU, Alabama. They're going to be in those races, and all it's just going to become a, a circus, I hope. I, I think it's awesome. That's just me. I, I That's a lot of college football talk. What else you got, dude? We kind of <laughs> Dustin, if you have one more stuff. thought, feel free to. We don't want to. I don't want to shut you out if you have another thought, and then we, we can move on. But Dustin, I always have thoughts. It's time to shut. We'll me. see. We'll see if he sticks around for that long. That would be my. That would be my two cents on that. Yeah, I it'll be interesting to see. It. Like once they start losing, because here's what I think. Last thing for me on Colorado, I think they're only going to win like seven, six or seven games. Which, when you look back on last year, they were one and eleven. Even if they win six or seven games, like that's. An improvement. 
I'll take eight. I'll take a, the over under seven and a half. I take over and I'll, I'll play you guys, whatever y'all want. I'll take the over <laughs> when sports betting becomes legal in nine days in Kentucky. Actually, it's legal now, but the sports book, the online sports books become legal on the 28th. So nice. I still don't have them down here, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We've been talking music a lot, and I mentioned Louder Than Life. And Dustin, I think you've actually referenced this article that I'm about ready to go through before, but it's the 13 bands that other people make you feel bad about loving. And oh, I'm curious if there's any back, thoughts. Number one. Well, this isn't in any order. But this is this okay. is just oh. a list. First, I up, think Nickelback is good. I'll say it. I, and I've said Nickelback and Creed. I bet they're both on this list. I enjoy both of them. For I've sure. seen. Well, For I sure. haven't seen Creed, but I've seen Nickelback a few times, and, and I know you've oh, seen him too, Justin. That's the story I was going to bring up earlier. You've seen Nickelback before. I have seen Nickelback. Do you want me to go into this story? Yeah, I, I don't want to spoil it, but I think I remember how the the night went down for you. So. Okay, I was in college, and um, this girl that I went to high school with, this was over the summer, a girl I went to high school with wanted to go to a Nickelback concert. And she invited me to go to this concert, and I was like, oh boy. First date kind of thing. Yeah, I'll go see. I wasn't... I wasn't the biggest Nickelback fan, but I... Before we get into that article, I don't... I don't care for them. I'm not the biggest fan. I don't hate them. I think that people just think it's cool to give them crap. And so that's why there's so much hate. So I think that that's, so anyway, we got the tickets probably two, three weeks before the show, getting really excited, getting pumped up, you know, firing myself up, got a date with this girl. I didn't have to ask her. She asked me a day or two before the concert. She was like, hey, I can't go. So <laughs> I had to scramble and invite my best friend, who thankfully was like, yeah, man, I'll go with you. Uh, and so he and I saw Chris Daughtry, Stained, and Nickelback in concert at – What a what is, what is it? What is it now? Is, is it Clips? Clips? Verizon is what I, I – th- I think it's the Ruoff Music Center. Yeah. No Ruoff. one. For the native Indi- Indiana ends and for people that are my age, it will always be known as Deer Creek. It will still be, we all refer to it as Deer Creek. But yeah, that was my, that and John, that was going to be my first concert experience. Or I, technically, it was my first concert. You don't like concert. live music anymore. Because yeah, you got stood I up. Mean, it could have been worse. Like think of it as did you get stood up or did she, did she really not, was she really not able or was she standing you up? Because it's terrible I, if she was. She came up with it. She had a reason, but I don't know if that reason was valid or not. I can't. I honestly can't remember. I was just like at the time. I remember I was like devastated. I'm like, oh, I don't think we talked again after that. <laughs> did you tell her that she looked so much cuter with something in her mouth? I did not That's say that. That's a Nickelback <laughs> lyric. <laughs> I know. Have some, I was they, like, I wonder yeah, if they're no. going to get the context of that. I mean, <laughs> but they. They do have some raunchy, not raunchy, but they do have some. Oh, they no, they do. They have raunchy. Music. Okay, okay. I, I didn't want to say raunchy, but they do have some of those songs. No, I did not tell her that. Um, <laughs> that's not why. But see, that's not like that didn't traumatize me from going to concerts. It's just like I after going to that concert, I was like, yeah, I'd like to do more of these. And then you go to a concert that's terrible, and you're like, I don't ever want to listen to live music again. I have seen so some I, bad live artists i've seen a lot of really good ones though um there was a phase in high school whenever i was seeing a lot of country concerts and the one in particular and it was actually an opener that was really bad it was lee bryce are you all familiar with lee bryce in country he has music? Parking, lot party. parking lot party i think this was the era like when that song came out but he did his, his performance was a lot like when Dustin was talking about Jason Mraz. He would sing a few lyrics and be like, yeah. oh, yeah, he'd point the microphone out to the audience and he'd stop singing. And it just didn't feel like he was there to sing his own music. He was trying to, like, play karaoke with the crowd. And I was just like, this guy's not a good performer. Can I turn this into a really sad type of thing? But this is, like, I don't know how else to explain this. Um, 
the best concert I've ever been to, and I don't know if this is because it tugs on my heartstrings or it's sentimental or what, but the I went to go see Train and Maroon 5 in Indianapolis, and I think Gavin DeGraw was there. There was some other opener uh, who just performed a few songs. I think it was Gavin DeGraw. Anyway, I went to go see them at Gainbridge Fieldhouse, and that concert – was really, really good from everybody that performed. The sad part of that story is, is initially that was supposed to be at the state fairgrounds. That was the year that stage collapsed. Oh yeah, it was Sugarland. And, and one of my one of my friends unfortunately passed away in that tragedy. Wow. Um, and so, and I think if I remember correctly, she like won the tickets via a radio show. Like that band was her favorite band. She passed away in that. Um, and I just remember, like, the very last train song, I don't remember what they did, but they brought up all the names of everybody that died there uh, on that day and their pictures. And there was, she went to, co I went to college with this girl. And um, there was, like, for whatever the happenstance was, there was, like, six of us from Manchester that just happened to run into each other at this concert. We didn't know each other had the tickets. And they brought up the name. I just remember we were all, like, hugging and crying and circled around nice and everything. Guy. It was like, so I will, I don't ever know if I remember that being a fantastic show, but it's one of those things where I don't know if it was a fantastic show because it was just like, it tugs on your heartstrings type of thing. Or if those two bands are just really, really good to see live. I think it's okay to be both. It yeah. could be, it, it, it could be both too. Yeah. That's, that's terrible. I remember, I don't remember how old I was whenever that happened, but that's sad that you have a personal connection with someone who passed yeah, away in that. I think, I think it was 2011 or 2012. It was just after I had just, I'd been graduated a year or two and it was, wow. I mean, that was, it was crazy. So from that, we move back into the, the list of, yeah, uh, sorry about that. that. Uh, <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, share whatever you want. It is what it is. I mean, people, everybody has good times, bad times and, and, you know, times that, mean nothing i yeah. guess everything in between <laughs> everything in between <laughs> <laughs> by the way train ju was just in town they were one of the bourbon and beyond bands from this past oh nice time. um so there you go so the first band i know we've already talked nickelback and creed they're probably going to be on here at some point but limp biscuit and i do i do agree that a lot of people are kind of divisive on limp biscuit i personally love limp biscuit just because i think it's couple reasons one i grew up with family that listened to limp biscuit and so you know there's the childhood nostalgic factor with that but also i just think it's fun if you don't take the music seriously it's it's really fun and i know limp biscuit has that if you've seen the woodstock documentary on netflix yep. or even other documentaries on it they get the blame for a lot of what happened at woodstock 99 um and i I don't know how much of that is warranted. Maybe all of it, maybe some of it, who knows, but regardless, and, and they're actually going to be, they're going to be in town this Friday whenever I'm there at Louder Than Life. So I'm, I'm looking forward to having my own Limp Biscuit experience, however that may go down. But I'm curious what your all's thoughts are, are on Fred Durst and the gang. I can't wait to hear what you have to say uh, after your experience, <laughs> but I, I'll keep it quick. I think, to me, it's one of those bands that I wonder if there's going to be more of these bands on there. Like, as a kid growing up, that was like the first parental advisory CD that I purchased or owned. And so to me, it's like, it's kind of like that nostalgia thing. Like, I don't know that their music is particularly good, but I was so into it because I was like, yeah, they're saying bad words. And, and yeah, like, you know what I mean? Like, that, that's how, because it was probably, I was probably in elementary school or junior high when they were really big. I don't know anything about them. I couldn't tell you one song. You don't know Limp Biscuit at all? I mean, I know the name, obviously, but I've never... If you played their top song, I guarantee I wouldn't know it. Really? What is their top song, Nookie? That's, you know, let's let's check Spotify. Check the old Spotify and see what the most streamed Limp Biscuit... That's the one I, that I'm comes to that I'm going to guess Roland. My guess would yeah. be Roland. Oh, I, I that's a good... Yeah exclusively i've changed now i don't listen to this as much but i was almost exclusively hip-hop so all my stuff was lil wayne young jeezy 
Um, Drake became popular when right about when I was getting my driver's license. So he was in the car all the time. Um, but those three are kind of like my big, those are probably the big three for me. Okay. Ace hood was in there, but I, I was a big hip hop guy. So I wasn't really listening to rock or anything. I, I mixed in, uh, uh, what's the, Oh my gosh. The gives you hell song. Oh, all American rejects. Yeah. 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 I mixed in them every once in a while, but whenever a girl wouldn't talk to me or something, but <laughs> <laughs> and pop punk. listen to that, uh, all American rejects and blink One Eighty Two and yeah. all that. Kind of there you stuff. Go. Yeah. I've learned, I like blink One Eighty Two now, but I never really listened to them back then. They're awesome. I wish I would have listened to them. They would have oh, fit yeah. right into that slot of, <laughs> I don't even want to talk to that girl anyways. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, back to the Spotify results. So Roland's number two. Number one is Break Stuff, which is the song that famously through Woodstock 99, okay. you know, caused the the big ruckus and stuff like that. So if you've never seen that uh, documentary or just that part of Woodstock 99, look it up. It is it is something crazy. Uh, number two, this, again, this I don't know if they're ranking these or not, but the next one's Nickelback. We've already hit on Nickelback. Number three, Black Veil Brides. I actually do not know a whole lot of about Black Veil Brides. And Mitchell I've never heard of them. I've heard of them. I may have heard a song, but again, none of us seem to have thoughts on them. But so there you go. Bullet for my Valentine. I know a couple of their songs, and they're kind of in that punky ish genre. Yeah, I'm not a big fan kind of, of a, them, but yeah, they're kind of a punk rock. I don't, I don't know that I make people. Well, first of all, I wouldn't make people feel bad about whatever music they choose anyway. I give John a hard time because it's easy, right? But of course. Um, but uh, <laughs> I don't really have any thoughts on Bullet for My Valentine either. I know I don't. I can't think of any of their music off the top of my head. I know that if you played a few of their songs, I would know what yeah. they were. I'll tell you, Black Veil Brides. I kind of dig their. Uh, like I was wearing their. If you look them up, the first image with the red background, that's what I was wearing to high school. Really? Okay. Yeah. So you should look it up. Let me take I'm gonna take a look at this. Black Veil Brides. So would you just type in Google images? I'm assuming just it's type, the very first thing. Yeah. Yeah. So you were wearing guy. what? Like the, the the guy in the middle? You had your shirt half buttoned all the way down <laughs> and you had some some neck tats or something. Oh, no, no, no. You're with the wrong one. That's the blue background. This one's a red background. This one has a red background. Oh, well, now I don't. Now this is terrible podcasting. Either way. Right. Either way. <laughs> <laughs> and there's probably multiple ones. Either way. That's funny. All right. Next yeah. up, My Chemical Romance. And from what I remember about them, they're like the prototypical emo band. Like if people saw you wearing emo clothes or whatever in high school, they thought you were listening to My Chemical Romance, that kind of stuff. Does that check out? Yep. It What's does. the song that they sing? Uh, Welcome is to the it, Black Parade is the one that yeah. I always think of. Isn't what, it? That's the one that the starts off like, one. when I was a young boy. Isn't that what it was? I don't know off the top of my head. It could be. I'm sure it's one of their songs. I'm, again, well, look this, at, this isn't one of the ones I, I follow. I just remember the stereotype with it. If I just sang the complete wrong song of that. No, that's what it is. Lyrics. When I was a young boy, my father took me to the city to see a marching band. He said, yeah, son, yeah. when you grow up, would you be the savior of the broken, the beaten, and the damned? And there you go. That's I will say, they, the lyrics of some of these songs are a lot better than some of the rap songs that I was listening to. <laughs> a lot better <laughs> than some of the, the rap music that was in your highlight video that you showed Four. your grandmother. I hope no one watched that. <laughs> All right, next up, Poison. Obviously, more that's more before my time, but I know that they're they're a hair that's metal. That's Michaels. Yes, exactly. Uh, Every rose has its thorn. Yep. What's wrong with that? Uh, ain't nothing but a good is ain't nothing but a good time. One, there ain't nothing but a good time. One of their songs. I, I don't, don't know. That's a good I'll question. Embarrass myself. Maybe we should have the the singer Mitchell sing the song for us. Just like I don't know the song. If you tell me the song, that I know. I'll sing it. What's this called? Poison. The band Poison. Hair metal no, band. But well, what's the song that you're talking about? 
I think it's called There Ain't Nothing But a Good Time. <laughs> Maybe I'm completely butchering the title. But the I only one I know called. is The Rose Has Its Thorns. Every rose or whatever. Right. Shout go. out to <laughs> shout out to my shout out to my friend Ken who listens to every pod. I got to give a shout out to two friends, but he always used to request that song to do karaoke too. Every I rose has to. its thorn. <laughs> That's, That's hilarious. That yes. is sneaky it's and fantastic. Awesome song. My go-to karaoke, and I've only done karaoke a couple of times, is "My Own Prison" by Creed. <laughs> oh, nice. So there you go. I'll give you another shout out. Stuff. So my. I'll give it so the friend that I'll give a shout out to Ed too, my friend Ed, because he also listens to every pod and he's the one that went with me to the Nickelback concert. There you I don't go. think you can call I don't think you can call him a wingman because there was no winging to be done at that point, but Yeah. No. Didn't just have to go to the concert by myself. Just some dudes. Just some guys Moving being forward. dudes. Good Charlotte. I was way too obsessed I with one song Good of theirs Charlotte. in particular. It was called I Don't Want to Be in Love. I don't oh, I don't remember that one. Super. I mean, maybe it was just, maybe I just stumbled upon it the right time in childhood, but it was, it, may, it made me want to be them. It was one of those kind of songs, you know? So if you're. If I you're, feel you're, like. Uh, good show. I feel like. Sick. The anthem, like, Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. Oh, yeah. The anthem's boys. a good one. The, the Girls and Boys song, that taught me about life. I. <laughs> So true. I feel like this is, I think John just hit on something in that if you stumble upon like the perfect heartbreak song at like eighth grade, I think that song sticks with you forever. I'm trying to remember. I don't, I can't think of one off the top of my head, but I guarantee you if that, if I came across a song that I attached myself to in junior high, because some girl didn't want to hold my hand or go with me to the junior high dance, I guarantee you would have instantly sparked those memories. I think there's one other instance. Do you guys remember the song Swing by Savage? Uh, yes. I don't think so. Now move Not it like me. a gypsy. Stop. Swing. Oh, back yeah. up. Now let me see your hips. Swing. Oh, no. I, I've heard that. I've heard that. <laughs> I remember Amazing. that song. Uh, it was like seventh grade. That was the first time that it was probably earlier than that. First time I was like, oh, wow, girls are cool. <laughs> oh, and that's the song i remember for whatever reason all right um let's let's blow through some of these maybe we'll, we can share thoughts still uh, if we have some right. but i remember already girls were cool that's an all-timer i already mentioned creed I really hope they come back on tour. I know they're doing a cruise or whatever. I talked about that, I think, in the very first episode of this podcast. So go Creed. Next up, Five Finger Death Punch. I think their big thing is that the reason people make fun of them is because their their gimmick is they try to be like overtly masculine and that kind of thing. And I can see why people would make fun of that. So give me a five give me a five finger death punch song. Wash it all away. That's the one that that I enjoy by them. Can you sing it? I'm not singing. No, we're not. Gonna, I'm not pulling a Mitchell Page and singing. Just look it up after you know, the fact. It's like we did with the Mannequin Band last week. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll do that. Um, but the one joke that was, do you remember when Juwan Howard slapped one of the coaches? Oh yeah. From, somebody came up with the joke Fab Five Finger Death Punch, and I thought that I, was. Pretty I did great. see that. That was fantastic. <laughs> Striper, they are a Christian metal, and I guess maybe they got made fun of because they were Christian metal. Or Those something. Kind of opposites. Yeah, just not going. They're going against I the grain God. kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you just do? I love God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, Stained, which you, we talked about them briefly earlier. I don't know. Stained the one thing about great. Stained, the only thing about Stained that I think I guess people may have an issue with is that Aaron Lewis just loves to talk about his politics, and that might piss people off. I don't know. Well, so. that could be. Next up, Puddle of Mud. Uh, obviously, the song She Hates Me, She Bleeping Hates Me. How is Puddle of Mud on this? Blurry is an all-time great. It's Let's just great throw that song. out there. My guess with this would be because of, of the way that he sings. He kind of sings a lot like the Creed singer, and that well, style of singing was kind of... 
I don't want to say frowned upon, but just people make fun of it. They think it's more like, uh, hey, it's, yeah, like I'm not really singing. I'm just wailing. That kind of you thing. You think so? I don't, I don't think so. He gives, um, uh, so the other one that is, um, psycho is a good one, but I feel like he is similar to the RIP, the lead Lincoln park singer. Oh yeah. Chester. Chester Benson. Yeah. Chester bank. He gives me more of those type of vibes than anybody else. Huh, that's an interesting comparison. I'd also be shocked if, if Lincoln park is not on this list. They're not on this list. We only have one more and that's wow. Fall Out boy. Oh, Fall Out boy. Sick. And they also oh, fall God. into that emo band, but again, I love Fall Out boy. Sugar. We're going down is a great song. Also love a lot of their new stuff. Believe it or not. They have a, they have a great new song called love from the other side. And it is a, uh, it's a banger. I'd recommend to anybody who likes rock. Thanks for the memories is one of those classics yeah. that you just remember. It was, I don't even, it might've been when I graduated eighth grade and went to high school. I did some air quotes cause I don't think that's technically a graduation, but I think it <laughs> it's came definitely out not. around that time. And everybody was posting like, thanks for the memories, Carmel middle school. Oh yeah. I think that, that's that's a song that's that, is, that is I don't want to make fun, but that is so lame. No, but that's Terrible. what we that's what middle schoolers do. They do Thanks, lame things. That, that's a good point. Thanks for the memories, middle school. I can't re I don't remember a good time I had in middle school to be quite I honest. Had all bad times. My friends stopped talking to me for two months straight. <laughs> middle school is definitely oh. the worst. But Correct. when you account elementary, middle, high, and then if you go to college. Middle school is without a doubt the worst. Oh, Nobody God. talks about their middle school days. Nobody. Do you remember the, the Dwight Schrute would shun, shun people? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So off that episode came out when I was in eighth grade and I didn't watch The Office. All my friends did. So they shunned me for literally two months. <laughs> <laughs> I would go to school and not speak and then come home. <laughs> it was crazy. Oh, man. <laughs> Wow. It was crazy. And I didn't, the worst part is like, I think in high school, they may have let you in on the joke, but they didn't think I had to know what they were doing. They just <laughs> never, they never told. They had Those Garen Catholics folks, they're ruthless, aren't they? That's Carmel Middle School for you, baby. Oh, Carmel Cougars. Middle School. Okay. Yeah. Man. Oh, this is a good, good way to wrap up this week's episode. I like that. I like that list. That was, that was fun. Yeah, that's I'm good. shocked yeah, Lincoln Park wasn't on it. Yeah, thanks for the memories podcast. Maybe they felt like they couldn't put it on there because because of Chester Bennington being gone. Because I don't think any of these other bands have people that are dead on them, to my knowledge. I could be wrong though. Who knows? I mean, I know I just said that kind of bluntly, but it is what it is. Oh boy. <laughs> so there you go. Um, I guess that about wraps up. I'm looking forward to having some louder than life stories next week. And uh, we're looking forward to it too. Yeah, I'm hoping I, I'm sure I'll see some interesting stuff. Last year, a lot of people I remember seeing being behind somebody in line who was wearing a shirt that said, Show me your butthole. So, if that was a little <laughs> teaser of what we're gonna see, then sorry, grandma. <laughs> yeah, I am just <laughs> oh man, I, I'm just telling you what I saw. I'm just telling you what I saw. Yeah, I mean, we were, you said, I think about that about wraps it up. <laughs> It does about wrap it One up. more for the road. <laughs> oh man. Well, so yeah, uh, let's let's just let's let's hit that outro music, shall we? Let's do it. What a what a what a fun end of the episode. Again, check out check us out on Hoosier Illustrated. What a, what an interesting transition. Check us out on Hoosier Illustrated for our weekly football recaps as well. <laughs> They're on uh they're on their uh, YouTube page. I can't even think of the name of the thing right now. I might end up redoing this outro. <laughs> as, as I can't, uh, I can't even keep my composure because Dustin is laughing in the background and I just need to not look at him. I just this need is to just a, you're bringing everything full circle right now. You're just getting nervous. Somebody's waiting on you to finish. This is just like going to the bathroom. It's just like, going, it's just like going to the bathroom. And it's also just like, it's like we oh. mentioned earlier, like people watching you while you do things. Yeah. And I've got. I like. <laughs> the outro music is gonna. It's gonna play for. It's gonna be gone for ten minutes. They played the outro music ten minutes ago, and now the episode is finally ending. 
Yeah. We're, I'm That's leaving. Right. I'm hanging up. I'm hanging up the, the Zoom call. I'm Goodbye.